Oh, wow. Three hours of rest. I have to get some sleep, folks. Oh, wait. But first, I have to do a wrestling show. Hello, everyone. I'm the one, the only, of Hobo Tom. And as you can tell by the updated, <laughs> somewhat updated at least, <laughs> overwritten uh, thumbnail, this is my Red Wine and Pizza Smackdown review. Nice Red Wine and Pizza Smackdown review. It's brought to you by, whoa, The Banished by 19 Crimes, Dark Red. 2017. Banished. Wait a second. So this happened to me a few times from work. Oh well, enough about that. Let's talk about some WWE SmackDown. And whoa, this was a long show. I need a little sip of root beer, my little hydrating fluid. Ah, oh, so good as some root beer. I don't know what it is about root beer. AC refreshing. Enough about that. Let's talk about some SmackDown. The SmackDown starts off. Uh, Roman Reigns. Oh, Pyro. Oh, yes. And just wait for my both birthday celebration. And actually, I'm only two months away from my two year celebration here on YouTube. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, yes. There's going to be some fireworks. I think this two-year celebration, I'm going to show you some insight into the Hobo Studios. Whoa. I have to tranquil a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, so it's SmackDown, so that's kind of a little preview. Uh, no one actually said anything on Discord today. I haven't gotten any recent likes. No, thank everyone for likes. For your likes. Um, I don't see who likes. I just know that there's a thumbs up. It's always good to see you again. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you do, you get a little special video dedication. For right now, I was SmackDown. Uh, start off, Roman Reigns, who gets all the pyro. Again, I already mentioned that. Uh, then the Usos came out. Baron Corbin and his lackeys, uh, Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler came out. They kind of <laughs> to a shoot on the reason why the Usos were suspended. DUI. Then, folks, you're going to have said alcohol, said adult beverages, such as 19 Crimes, The Banished. Just go to sleep. Don't drive. Oh, that's okay. I have to change that anyway tomorrow. Tomorrow's the first of the month. I have to change my calendar. Well, I have to mark that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No way I do. Uh, then, so for the most part, we have set up for the main event a lose reads dog food match. And Rube is like, What? I'm not eating dog food. Dog food! And that's a classic line from Caddyshack. Everyone should see Caddyshack at least once. It starts off with a fatal four way tag team match. You have the revival, Lucha House Party. I know who's jobbing? Uh, heavy Machinery. And the Miz and Morrison connection. Oh, yes. John Morrison, you're still so great. I don't know why you ever left. Well, I know why you left Lucha Underground, but that's a whole other issue. Uh, for the most part, it starts off with Dawson and Taki. Taki! Yeah! I'm Taki! Uh, to start, again, Taki shows off his Azulian's power. We should. Uh, and then there was a, a trade off bear hug between Tucker Knight and. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I have to be careful. You don't want to break my camera. That would be very bad. Uh, then Otis gets double teamed a lot. Again, he's the bigger guy. People realize, hey, we have to double team the big guy. Uh, then Grand Metal League gets the blind tag. Or blind tag all over the place. They're just tagging whoever. Uh, then Morrison. Oh, face is off with Grand Metal League. Oh, this is Shades of Lucha Underground, where John Morrison is Johnny Mundo. Ashy excels. Wow. And then let's see here. Dorado got semi caught. Morrison, again, he does that spinning splash of the top, the ground. Whoa. 
That's definitely shades of Lucha Underground, folks. They just flip all over the place. Uh, Can Metal League trying to toss him in, into, into a crowd into the mass of humanity? That was pretty cool. Again, always fun to see Lucha moves. I don't know what people have against the Lucha style of wrestling. It's just fun to watch. And of course, eventually, because there's eight men, everyone into the pool. Uh, Morrison gets tossed by Otis. Does the double splash onto both Miz and Morrison. Then he hits the oh, oh, double caterpillar. Both of Miz and Morrison. Miz tries a crossbody. I don't think I've ever seen Miz do a crossbody. If he has, it's been a long time. Uh, but he was caught by Otis, uh, Grand Metalik, and Lindsay Dorado. They do stereo splashes. Oh, so fun in solution style. Morrison, I think, overshot the top rope. Managed to catch himself for a second rope spear. It's pretty good. Uh, Dorado did the triple moonsault. So good. So smooth. From the third moon side, he was caught by Dash. And then eventually, I think Dash got himself caught into the skull crossing finale and to Starship Pain! Pain! And therefore, the Miz and Morrison win. And at the Super Showdown, which is the end of February in Saudi Arabia, I'll see if I can make that or not. All depends on my work schedule, folks. Is it 29th? It's what day anyway? Saturday. I don't know. I might make that. It all depends. I think they're going to have me work a whole bunch of weekends because I have to take a whole bunch of weekends off for my other job. So we'll see what happens there. But I'll tell you what. Miz and Morrison went over. This is a surf and turf quality match. Then we have a little bit of the Fiend and Daniel Bryant, and then Heavy Machinery and Fire and Desire promos. Oh wait, Otis acts like he's in like grade school, and Tuck and Tucky's like, yeah, do like we planned. And Otis is like, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Mandy, will, will you go on a date with me this Friday? And Mandy says, no, I, I can't this Friday. And I'm like, yes, yes. Yes, but she said, I'll do it next Friday. I'm like, no. That's Valentine's Day. Boo, Valentine's Day. Boo. Although we will have a Valentine's Day. This one goes out to all the ladies special for the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. And I don't know the matches I have to book. I have to figure out the matches. But Otis has a date on Valentine's Day. I hate Valentine's Day. I forget the last time I had a good Valentine's Day. I'd... No, I can't say that. I have had... One good Valentine's Day? In all the years I've been on this earth. Wait a second. Yes! Why well, one good Valentine's Day? I hate Valentine's Day. I hate Valentine's Day. And a little bit of emphasis there. I think I sold the CD too, so that's good. So yeah, whatever. Otis, you're definitely fighting above your weight class, though, buddy. Good luck to you. Then we have the Daniel, again, a little bit more. And Daniel Bryan says how his daughter says, But, Daddy, I want to see the boo-boos. Hey, Petey, these boo-boos are really bad. He's like, but it's totally worth it. I hope my daughter finds something that's totally worth it. I forget the, the exact words, but that's what it is. But it was Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss taking on Fire and Desire. Um, oh yeah, I forgot the circle won this match. Um, it was a it was a pretty fun match. Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. 
Nikki Cross is amazing looking. Nikki Cross is married, though. Mm. Depressing. She'll probably have a good Valentine's Day, though. Maybe you'll have an interesting Valentine's Day. So you know, who knows what kind of Valentine's Day she has. And Alexa Bliss? Hey, Alexa. I'm single, too. A fire and Desire jump Nikki and Alexa to start the match. Sonya then sends Alexa into the table. Oh. And then Mandy Rose. Ooh, that knee. She knows how to use that knee, folks. And then, wow, you just listen to Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross has such a pair of lungs. Oh, I bet you she's a screamer in the sack. Yeah. But yeah, she's good at screaming. Uh, then there was Neckbreaker by Nikki, followed by the Twisted Bliss. And Nixie and, and and Nikki Cross. She she keeps on undoing her top. Or her or her vest keeps on coming off and showing us her sports bra. I can deal with that. Uh, but Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss actually win. And now she had a pretty good match. It was fairly quick. Nothing nothing mind blowing, nothing terrible. Mandy Mandy Rose did have that amazing knee. Boo Sonya Deville. Boo. Boo! Boo, Sonya Deville! Sonya Deville's gonna get booed forever, though. Not only did she send Alexa Bliss into the table, but, but she made my princess, my now married princess, Kimberly, be a jobber! Boo, Sonya Deville! But overall, this was still a cheap burger match. And then the next match sh showcased Braun Strowman taking on Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura is smart. He's, he knows he has to get in there with quick kicks, uh, quick blows for a while. However, Braun Strowman does get his hands on him. Every time he did, Sami Zayn, being the smart person he is, trying to distract Braun Strowman. Again, he would get his cheap shots in. For the most part, Sami Zayn wasn't helpful, though. He did undo the turnbuckle in a very Yano esque style. Um, however, Shinsuke Nakamura was the one who got planted into said turnbuckle. That led to a power slam, and Braun just has monster clotheslines. Which is a beast. Shinsuke eats the power bomb. And whoa! Braun Strowman is now the Intercontinental Champion. Actually, this was also another fun match. Again, Cesaro tried to get involved. It was good. It had all the dynamics you really wanted from this kind of match. This is a cheeseburger match. And we have Elias. And then he interrupted a Sami Zayn promo backstage. Sami's like, listen, I just want to talk. So every time Sami would talk, brum. Guitar would play, so he sent Cesaro out. Elias eventually just jumps Cesaro. There's no match. This is absolutely nothing for Cesaro. I normally don't rate segments, but this segment, folks, was a piece of toast. And there was a really quick Jameson and Shorty G match. I don't know why they did this. We had this for the Royal Rumble. Um, as Sheamus comes out, Shorty jumps him. Yeah, that's about all Shorty did to him, except for that headbutt. He did do that top rope drop kick. He missed on the moonsault. Sheamus eventually hit the Irish curse backbreaker. Um, he again, he had to come back, hit him with a bro kick. Whatever. It was kind of that weird throwaway match. Sheamus won as the way it should be. This is a ham sandwich of a match. And we have a Bailey promo. Wow. Bailey still looks like a Romulan villain, even in street clothes. And Naomi's back. Yes, 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 yes. Naomi comes out. She has a TJC helmet. Oh, that was so amazing, though. It was like like a helmet, like a, a Velcro helmet with like all kinds of LED dead mile kind of lights and everything. That was utterly amazing because you're serious like this is Naomi's music wait 
Does Naomi, did Naomi put, put like glowing stuff in her hair? Wait. Why is Naomi's hair changing? Wait. Why is Naomi's face changing? Oh, that's awesome. They're using stuff. Awesome. So that was fun. Naomi would probably take on Bailey at uh, WrestleMania. Because they won't be at Super, Super Showdown. There will probably be some kind of Fatal 4 away or um, Triple Threat match at the March pay-per-view. But it doesn't matter. Naomi's going to face Bailey, I hope, at WrestleMania. So that should be pretty cool. I'm not going to it. I'm not paying $250 a ticket plus $50 parking plus $100 worth of gasoline and taking a day off from work. If I can get a free ticket, I am. If I can't get a free ticket, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, because the train doesn't go all the way over there. Only from Orlando. And by the time it ends at midnight, ooh, that's touch and go. And then we have the main event, which lasted, I think, all of like 15 minutes. It was weird. They're doing like weird main events where it's really short. It was the Oos, Oosos, and Roman Reigns taking on Baron Corbin, the glorious Robert Roode, and, the Dolph, and Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode really don't focus much in this match. The one U Uso gets beat up a lot. Not that much. He gets tossed into the timekeeper area. It was a fairly quick match. Um, Roman Reigns eventually misses a Superman punch, uh, which turns into a sidewalk slam. Again, a lot of Usos versus Baron Corbin. Every so often, Dolph Ziggler would get in a super kick. Uh, Robert, the glorious Robert Roode would do something every so often. For the most part, it was just like Baron Corbin, because you could tell Baron, because because Robert Roode's like, dude, I'm not eating, I'm not eating dog food. So he's a dog food match. What the hell are you talking about? It's not my hell with this. Um, but with that again, Roman Reigns got deep six after he got suplex. Eh, he kicked out though. That's pretty good. But then he had a fisherman's cross, and then. The flying Usos. Eventually, Baron Corbin didn't get speared. And Baron Corbin got put into handcuffs by the Usos. And was forced to eat dog food. And <laughs> glorious Robert Root and Dolph Ziggler were nowhere to be found. So again, um... Usos and Roman Reigns went over. Yeah. It was another ham sandwich of a match. And then, man, do Corby eat dog food so much, but dog food got thumped on him. Yeah, whatever. Um, it was an okay SmackDown. SmackDown started off really great. And then just fizzled off at the end. I'll say this is a man ham sandwich for SmackDown. Okay, folks. Welcome back from the little break. Let me get a little water in my system. I'll truly hydrate now. Mm. Good stuff. Good for you. And let's talk about some 205 Live. Yeah. 205 Live is definitely not what it used to be. When I'm filling out my little calendar book. Okay. I did that. I did that. I did that. Got that eye off. I did that. With that, time for a new month. When I'm more worried 
But I have to wake up early tomorrow, too. So I have to get the sun over with. I'm more worried about what's in this book than 205 Live. You know, it's not a good show. In fact, this is what my cat thought about 205 Live. Cheese pa. Wrestling's on. What do you think about 205 Live? It's like staring at me. What do you think of 205 Live, Cheese pa? Okay. Oh, wow, 205 Live was meh. Um, starts off with Joaquin Wild DJZ. Comes out with a new DJ mask. I do like that. Taking on Raul Mendoza. Oh, wow, this could have been an amazing match. Actually, it was pretty good. Um, this is probably the best match of them all. Uh, the last match was just, yeah. Uh, very. T it was this. This uh, Joaquin Wilder versus uh, Wild versus Raúl Mendoza it was very technical match. Um, Raúl Mendoza has had better matches in NXT. I wonder if he's missed it all in NXT. Um, they do a little back and forth of traded pins. This is pretty cool. Um, Raúl, when he wants to make it quick, he can go quick. Joaquin, he just wants to go fast. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, air raid thing. I can't even do it. Um. And then they do that, that, that terrible transmission, the the kata hajine. Oh my God, Taz has to be saying, "I'm so happy." I mean, AEW the way they are butchering transmission. The transmission was one of the most feared submissions at one time. It was supposedly banned from judo. But everyone uses it, and they're just like, uh, yeah, uh, 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 leave me a bit new. It's like, no, it's like, it's terrible. You're supposed to be locked in, and you're choking the person up. And, and the guy's like, can't breathe, and it's a, it's a blood choke. So, but I don't know. They do a fake test mission. It just makes me sad. It was a hip toss to the floor by DJ Z. So that was pretty cool. Um, again, Raul Mendoza really can't do anything bad. Uh, Joaquin Wilder does does the wild thing. I don't know what he calls it, but whatever. Okay, so it it was good. Uh, they did have the good show of respect, horsemanship at the end. It's Raul Mendoza and DJ Z. Just because of those two names, this is a ch cheeseburger match. Normally, I would say it's a, it's a hamburger match. It's, a, it's above a ham sandwich. Not quite a cheeseburger, like a cheeseburger without the cheese. But that's okay. And Danny Perch, number two of one, two. Hang on. Me, Brian Kendrick. I'm the man with the plan. Yeah. Uh, so with this, again, Ari Devari's out there. Kendrick's again. That's kind of like kind of very basic heel tactics. Again, the heel delaying tactics goes out to the outside a lot. Slow, really slows down the pace, which should be a really fast-paced match. Devari's there for the distraction. Uh, Danny Birch eventually. Sends Kendrick into the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the walrus. Goop at you. Uh, does first again, does the hip toss into the table too? Or we Byron Brian Kendrick? Well, that can't go over well. Um, again, then he virtually gets his offense in. Um, eventually, Kendrick. Uh, does the step over to hold. I do. I want to upgrade this. Only because I do like old-fashioned wrestling moves like the step over to hold. 
Rarely seen now. Uh, Danny Birch did hit a missile dropkick from the top rope. Davari just again just caused the that's the finish, baby. He's made a very deliberate action. And yeah. No, I'll go with my original thought. This is a dusty old ham sandwich. When they double team for Danny Birch, but then Oni Morgan comes in. Oni, 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 Oni. He looks so much better in street clothes. Oh my god, does Oni Lorcan have skinny legs? But at least street clothes fills it out a little bit better. Yeah, and so now you have one, two back. One, two. Oni Birch. That was pretty cool. Then the main event, and this could have been so amazing, but it wasn't. It was. Blah. Uh, Angel Garza taking on Tyler Breeze. This is kind of, it, it almost harkens back to the days of the model of Rick Martel where he's like, oh, okay, you can hit me anywhere. Um, I forget who it was against. I think it was against, oh, some other pretty boy wrestler, whoever the pretty boy face wrestler was. But they had like a gentleman's agreement. They, our faces are, are too pretty to hit, so we're not going to punch each other in the face. And again, Angel Card is just funny. He's, he's, he's saying that he's prettier than, than Prince P Pretty Tyler Breeze. Um, they're both pretty slick, though. They both kind of do the counters. They both do the taunts, which was kind of fun. Kind of switch spots. The thing is, for this match with Angel Garza, because I've seen Angel Garza in the past in NXT, he was a lot quicker. They must have told him, it's like, hey, you have to slow it down. Here, that was really showing the effects from uh, when, when worlds collide. Kind of hard to see which ones, see, figure out which one's which. Eventually, he does rip off something Los Pantalones. I have to ask Liz. It's like, it's like, what do you call ripping off your pants in Spanish? It's like something Los Pantalones, right? Might get me fired, though. You never know. I'll, I'll phrase it in a way where it'll be funny, though, and she'll just laugh and say, you're crazy. And I'll feed her some eggnog cheesecake and, and everything will be good. But I do have to use up my eggnog. I have to make eggnog chocolate chip cookies. And I think just for her, just to appease one of my underbosses, I'll make a eggnog cheesecake. And just say, here. Happy, ooh, I can do that for Mardi Gras. I, I, I'd be revered as, as such a great and amazing human being that day. But it's Mardi Gras, though. You have to have booze on Mardi Gras. Who doesn't have booze on Mardi Gras? Oh, silly Christians don't, but it's because they're not Catholic like me. Catholics like me party. So then I, I, I get grumpy for 40 days. That's a whole other issue, though. Uh, then there was uh, Angel Garza delivering the knee in the tree when Tyler Bree was in the sea of woe. It was a reverse slingshot suplex, which is pretty fun. The wing clipper. Angel Garza won. Man. It was a ham sandwich match. <laughs> that was 205 Live. And wow, well, my weekend starts now! And 205 Live? Wow, look at that. I'm going to need a number of pages for sure. It's so much easier. I don't have wrestling to watch this weekend. I have weekend of work. That's okay. I have the Super Bowl to bet on. Go Niners! I'm already up one and a half points. Again, I'm sorry for being a gambling de degenerate, but that's okay. Um, so, 205 Live for the most part was a ham sandwich.
We'll see what happens if I keep on wanting, wanting to review Go 5 Live for, for if I'm just tired and want to go to sleep from work after SmackDown. And we'll see. And you never know what the future holds, folks. Uh, other than that, I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. Hopefully one day over here and set empty chair to your girlfriend. Other than that, everyone have a good week.